the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. I am one of your hosts, Willie, the habitual line stepper. And I am, of course, joined by some three dope individuals. Let's get the show on the go, on the road. Ah, look at it, I already messing up. Joe, how you doing, King? What's up, fellas? What's up, Willie? I'm doing good. Excited to be here. Good, good. Ready to rock. Cool, cool. Half land, half amazing. How you doing, King? I got to change that. I got to change that. <laughs> I'm good. Fresh off a of dad duty, so ready to misbehave, but let's go. Oh, shit. Big brother, how we doing, King? I'm doing good. Feeling well, feeling upbeat. Good to talk to everybody, see, you know, have a chat. You know, everybody was dead in our chat this week. So, yeah, good to talk to everybody. Good. Yeah. Glad to see everyone is present. Glad to see everyone, you know, is doing well because mm-hmm. I couldn't tell from the chat. Um. Well, I'm doing well. I, I've been on vacation. So when I'm on vacation, a lot of times y'all not gonna hear from me <laughs> unless I'm just like that bored. And so then, when you're on vacation, our friendships are on vacation. No, no, it ain't that. It's, I mean, that's that's what he said. That's what I he mean, said. Big the, brother. That's the, what he the, said. <laughs> the line of communication was. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so obviously, everyone should tell I, I miss the guys because right. I feel irate. <laughs> I'm combative with them. So, we not your friends on vacation? No, nah, it's I'm just. Tell you what, I'm going to tell you what happened, big brother. What's up? HR, he got in trouble with HR for mm. taking gummies on camera. So, now he pops his gummies throughout, throughout the week and then he just, you know, he disappears. We don't, we don't. <laughs> Exactly. He's over there high, man. He's on cloud exactly. nine. Exactly. Ain't got time for us. Hey, I was exactly. I was ghost. Once I left work, I didn't even tell nobody I was gone. I just packed up my shit and left. <laughs> you didn't tell nobody. Not I us, didn't. Nobody. Not, just, yeah, <laughs> nobody. J. Dot, scroll, just scroll through our chat. It is dry. And it, the last week, that it's chat dry. is dry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. No, no jokes from Joe. Nothing. Joe was dry. Yeah, nothing. But. Jay no. was MIA. I've been on. Like, oh, yeah, I, I, mean, I was on. I guess I'll see him in. I was on vacation, man. I was just doing some cooking for the winter and just you know, getting my mental health together. So it was just me kind of taking take, taking a break from everybody and everything. You know, it ain't too often you get to have the house to yourself. So next time I catch flights, I'm you know I'm just. Not in the chat. So when I'm not in the chat, no, I'm on a flight. That's what y'all can do. <laughs> Everyone, you can see I'm passively aggressive yeah, saying that. Yeah, you, you know, are. I mean, we. I miss the guy. I mean, I, that's, I, that's what I'm I apologize. I mean, at any time, you could have you could have sent a message in the group. I did. And he was dry. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do, do we have HR for HR? Like, who, who, who corrects HR when they, right. have, when they it, be a passive aggressive? Me. Passive, passive aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the way that we tell each other that hey, we missed each other. We right. just give each other a bunch of, you know, feedback. A bunch of yeah. passive aggressive uh, <laughs> feedback. <bunch> passive aggressive. <laughs> so those are that's how I'm gonna um, respond to everybody. Oh, surprisingly, right? Oh, really? That's how you feel? <laughs> right. I'm not surprised by it. So how's your how, well? Since we talking about mental health, how, how's everybody's mental health this week? Joe, I'm doing well. Brother? Thankfully, by the grace of God. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Just, good. uh, I've been, I have an explanation to my dry, ch- uh, to the chat. Did you say dry? I've just been <laughs> to the dry chat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, I have no signal. I have, by the time I get out of work and I get into town and I have signal and I start reading everybody's messages, my time is like 10 o'clock your time. Mm-hmm. So it's like, damn, should I respond? I know Big Brother's gonna respond. Big Brother's like Batman, but 
I was like, damn, should I even respond to, you know, that everybody's probably asleep and I get a bunch of messages. But that's usually um, when I'm driving around and I'm going to different places in Arizona, you know, there's some spots where I have, like, no signal. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what's been happening. I've just been working longer. Usually I get out a little bit earlier, but I've been working a little bit longer, been, been busy. But other than that, my mental health is good. Just work, man. Just busy as heck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know if I've shared this on the show before, but uh, I was diagnosed bipolar too. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could feel myself drifting into a depressive period. Uh, and, it, you know, it's cyclic. It comes. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. There's nothing logical that triggered it. I think I was telling somebody yesterday, like, uh, I don't want to feel this way, you know, and logically, I know I have no reason to feel this way, but I still feel this way. And so it's it's frustrating on top of the depression that, you know, you know, you have no reason to be depressed, but, you know, it is what it is. And as, as fucked up as this is going to sound, like, being forced to be social is probably the best thing for me right now. So I appreciate you guys. You know, if, if this was any other situation, I probably would try to isolate, which is the opposite of what I should do. So uh, this is a perfect time. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, you said bipolar 2, as in, is that in, as into yeah. something else, or is it actually called bipolar 2? Bipolar 2. So for me, um, like... You know, when people think bipolar, they think manic and depressive. Uh, I don't have manic episodes. So my normal is low. My manic is pretty much most people's normal. And my depressive is, you don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, this, they call it hypomania. I don't have manic episodes. The doctor pretty much explained to me, like, <laughs> manic episodes normally only end in the hospital or jail. Like, they don't have good endings. When people get into mania, like, that's a... It's a crazy situation. So my my manic is hypomanic, not quite mania, but it's usually when I'm the most social and I'm most talkative and things like that. Okay. I, I appear normal because my normal is pretty low. I got you. Okay. Damn, that's some, that's some deep scientific shit right there. It is. And, but it's, it's a blessing to know because when I feel these episodes coming on, I know what it is, and I know that it's cyclical. I know it'll pass. And as long as I don't do anything stupid or crazy, like, I'll come out of it, mm-hmm. you know, just fine. And if I let it feel like it's the end of the world and I start making decisions based upon that, I could, you know, really fuck some stuff up. So okay. it's great to know. I think people should go get diagnosed. Even if you don't do the medication, sometimes just knowing what's going on with you will help you get through it. Okay, so how, how do people find out? I mean, if you, if you notice that you dealing with something, you know, like Big Brother has said before, you know, go talk to somebody, mm-hmm. whether it be a medical doctor, uh, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or whatever, just go to try to just go attempt to find out. You know, maybe you're depressed, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's, you know, you're dealing with some sort of trauma, but sometimes if you just know what it is that you're facing, then you can plot a course out of it. You can't, in order to get from point A to point B, you must first know where you are. So it's it's important to just find out where you are, and then you can figure out how to get out of it. Okay, okay. Mental health is important, kings and queens. So make sure you stay up Absolutely. on it, especially in the, with the winter months coming, and you know the, the the days are shorter, not as much sunlight. I was just, I was just talking to the queen a couple of weeks ago about she gets cabin fever really bad in the winter. So I told her I was like, you might want to look into maybe getting you some D two. To kind of help, you know, that uh, I don't I don't know what the proper term is, but I just know that hey, you might just want to look into it. Then you know, to, to get yourself chemically together, you know, for for the winter for the winter months, you know. But <laughs> I know you know Big Brother used time about you know the chat room was dry and and I noticed that you and Big Bro- um you and Joe was talking last night in the chat. And something y'all don't know, yeah. <laughs> something y'all don't know is like, I have a setting on my phone where my notifications turn off at like seven, at seven o'clock every night, unless I manually turn it off. I manually turned the bitch on last night <laughs> because I'm still on vacation. <laughs> it's not that. Once it, again, put it. <laughs> 
once again for everybody as the team. Right. That's the way you know, just saying, hey. Right. He missed us. He yeah. missed the friendship. He missed the camaraderie. Yeah. I think I said it before, I'm a very I'm I'm very much camaraderie. You know, mm-hmm. I like that. And you know, we always have a good time. So that's my playful way of saying that. And mm-hmm. just to back it up on J Dot real quick before we move on. J Dot, as you know, we're just here for you. However, we need to mm-hmm. be here for you. You know, just always say uh, we said it before, but sometimes I just like to keep repeating it just so people don't forget it. J Dot here for you, brothers. We all know that we're all here for one another, not just on the show, mm-hmm. but all for the show when one of us or all of us need just a vent or anything. But yeah, me and Joe was deep in it because that owl messed me up. I was like, what? <laughs> I yeah, have to say when, when I when I seen it, and I was like, I thought this was common knowledge, and I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my notifications off because I'm ready to go to bed at this point, and I'm not about to, I'm not about to sit through this. Well, J Dot, I don't know if you saw. I blame Joe. I said, Joe, you didn't tell us this. You supposed to be oh, yeah. in charge of all the strange facts. I know y'all can see like who sees the man. I see the man. I'm not getting involved in the conversation. Right. Oh, oh, oh yeah. look, don't think you slick, J Dot, because I saw the tight start then stop. It's like somebody turned their lights off when they saw you go by the house. Hey. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not having a conversation about our legs. It's not. It's not happening. But see, I've I've been I've been smoking briskets for like the last three days, so I I really hadn't. I like that. What's up? No, I like that pause right there. I've been smoking. Uh, <laughs> I've been yeah, I've been smoking briskets for like the last three days, so I really hadn't had like a lot of sleep. So like last night was the first time I had actually went to bed before one a.m. So other than that, I've been it's up to like go to bed early. huh? I said it's probably a good thing because I know you go to bed really early. Yeah, well, like when you like smoking briskets, it's like a it's like a ten to sixteen hour process. So I just I've been up order it. Just water it. I said, why don't you just order it? He's so uh we're gonna move on. Brother's a family. <laughs> <laughs> he went to school for this. He just orders that shit in. Oh no, yeah, that's right. He did. He did. No, he did. I didn't I didn't I didn't go to school to to learn how to smoke briskets. That's just something that no, I'm just you culinary school. Yeah, I mean, you went to yeah. school for all that. Yeah, so yeah but your, you love it. Me, you know, I'll just think like oh, I'll just order it. Well, it's it's a whole lot cheaper if I just do it myself, and it tastes better. So what what you would pay for a pound, a brisket, I can get that. I can get a whole brisket, you know, for about fifty, sixty bucks. If Big Brother wanted to order one from you, have you freeze it and ship mm-hmm. it? What you what you charge for for Big Brother? At least five hundred dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and I might, and I'm, and I might throw him in a piece of cheesecake, just you know, for for um, Yo, everyone. I don't know if you, that cheesecake did look good though. It did. I'm it like, did. it was take good. Amex. Here you go. It was that good. cheesecake looked yeah, good. It was. I'm, I'm currently in the process of um, trying to decide if I want to do orders for the holidays or not. So I'm, I may be busy. I may be. A little bit more busy than what I am here in the, in the next few weeks for the next couple months. Lead, no, don't leave us out. Don't 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 shut us out again, Willie. You know? No, no, no. I, I want to shut y'all. I was just I was just taking me some time to myself. You know, get get myself together for for the day. You know. I got you. Did that sound good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Will's like, oh, I gotta record with them. <laughs> 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 I just picture Will like that. I promise, if he I'm says gonna this, I'm gonna take four gummies today. Four. To to Will, you better not have to take no gummies. <laughs> hmm. And Joe, what you over there doing? <laughs> Let's see what. Make sure Joe ain't sipping on nothing. <laughs> I know. I just. Uh, it's just. Sugar-free. Right, Sugar-free. Yeah. There yeah. we go. I, I gotta start. I gotta start later. I'm gonna grill some brats today. Some, oh, some hot dogs and some fries, and my wife went to the store to get some some kind of beer. You know? Okay. Yeah, all right. So oh. it's only two thirty-two right now. So I'm not gonna go out and cook out at 110 degrees. 
So around four yeah, o'clock, five o'clock, you know, it's gonna be around ninety, maybe, and I can go out there and cook. Mm. Dang, that's too hot. Yeah, complain no more. Yeah, right, so you good now? You you good now, Dot? Does the weather drop? No, it's eighty eight today. Oh, it's eighty eight. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, y'all ready to get this on the on the on the roll? Let's go. Yeah. All right. So I've been kind of I've been kind of noticing something here lately. Or it was a thought that I had. And I just want to get your perspective on this. Have, have y'all noticed that there's been a whole, there's been like a, a, a uptick on kids coming out of the closet in the last few years? Have y'all noticed that at all? Yeah, I, I feel like I've definitely noticed it. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a sensitive topic. I'm gonna see where you go with this. No, I I don't. <laughs> No, it won't be it won't be that type of conversation. Not not for not for this. But Joe, how how would you feel if, how would you feel or handle if your child had came out to you? Well, I don't know. I, I, it'd be weird, but you know, I think a lot of this stuff is um I think a lot of this stuff is caused by they're just following something. You know what I mean? I, I maybe I just have a different perspective of things because I I believe that you're born either a man or a, a male or a female or well, how would you put it, right? Uh, you're born that way, right? And I think there's a lot of social media that's involved in this, and people are just kind of following along, right? Like a bunch of sheep, and and people follow, man. You know what I mean? I mean, there's there's little groups. And they start coming out and they're like, hmm, then you start putting these things in, you start putting these ideas into young children that haven't matured enough. And they start wondering, what the hell am I, right? And I believe that you can steer a, a young person's mind uh, these days a lot faster than uh, back when we were growing up, right? So, uh, like I said, and I think it has to do a lot with social media itself and uh, back in the day when we were growing up, we we were playing outside and playing with our friends and doing all kinds of different stuff, right? And we didn't have a whole lot of other stuff. Whatever you heard was from your friends, and that's it. But now you can hear not only from your friends, but you hear from the world. So if it's cool to come out of the closet, you're going to have a bunch of people that are going to want to come out of the closet because they think it's cool, right? They're like, oh, I'm liberated. So, I mean, I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. So, because I've seen HR's eyes kind of, light up as you start talking <laughs> but so are you saying your perspective on this is it's kind of like religion like if we get them young we got them yeah okay Jada. i don't think you can i don't huh? think you can find out and be like oh oh you know what i think i'm a i think i'm a girl mm -hmm. i i don't know man i i just i don't know that's just the way i think you know, I'm, I could be completely wrong, but so sorry, if your son no. came around the corner and said, "Like, hey, Dad, my name's not Chad no more. It's Christine. What you gonna do?" I would have to definitely talk to him and be like, "Are you? Who the hell are you talking to? Right? Mm -hmm. Who's your friends? Let me see your phone. Like, you know, are you like, what's the deal here? Like, how did you come up with this decision?" That all of a sudden you're Christine, but a month ago you were John. Like, you need to tell me why you think you feel this way, and maybe I can either get him some help. Maybe he's struggling with some uh, mental, you know, issue, right? Trying to figure out. Maybe he's just, his buddies are peer pressuring him or anything, right? So I would definitely have a discussion where I need to make sure that what the hell is going on, right? Chemical imbalance. I mean, all kinds of shit, right? You just, you just never know. Okay. HR, are we still good? Can can we continue? We good? Are we still in the green? No, no, we're just having a conversation. Okay. And I, like I said, the my my the sensitivity sensitive to the light. My that was my eye moving. Okay. J dot. If 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 if, 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 if Chef Elise came around the corner 
said, my name's not Chef Elise no more. My name is Chef Evan. How's that conversation going to go? All right, yeah, let, me, let me see if I can trigger HR real quick. Uh, first off, I think in that specific scenario, I gave you your name. Your name is, is what I told you it was. Like, we, you, when you get old enough to be able to legally change it, enjoy yourself. But, mm-hmm. you know, until I tell you your name is something different, it is what it is. But uh, in, the, in the other scenario, like, you know, we just, when I was a kid, I thought I was Spider-Man. I, when I was 16, I told people I was a Republican. Nobody let me run with those things. Like, you know, if, if I was stuck with those decisions that I made at, like, at that age when I didn't <clears throat> know myself fully, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'd be, yeah, I, I, would, I would hate that. So, yeah, if that's, if that's how she feels, then, you know, we can have that conversation and, you know, make it clear that I love you no matter what. It doesn't change how I feel about you. Um, I don't necessarily have to agree with everything that you think or you feel, but I'm always love you. But, you know, you don't, you don't have enough information about yourself, about the world, about anything to be making any serious decisions right now. So just, all right, you know, if that's how you feel for the moment, your name is silly least. We're not, we're not doing that at all. I'm not allowing a seven-year-old to decide that she's no longer a girl because she's seven, you mm-hmm. know. Like I said, she could think she's a Power Ranger too. I'm not gonna let her go fight monsters, you know. So, uh, we I think in some of these ways we have to be parents and let, you know, children are gonna think a lot of things and 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 they always think they're smarter than us and they understand stuff that they don't understand. But if we know that they're kids and they don't understand what they're saying, um, you know, rein them in a little bit, give them the freedom to figure it out. But I don't think we need to just jump on the bandwagon with him and let's say let's go full speed on this you know you're a boy thing it's like you know let's let's talk about this let's figure it out but let's keep it let's keep it in the realm of reality for right now until i feel like you are aware enough to make a decision like that okay so that let's take out the whole changing the name part what what if she just comes out and says that she's gay how do you how do you first of all do you know what gay is do you know what that means? Do you know what you're saying if you say you're gay? Because mm-hmm. at seven, I don't know that you are necessarily sexually attracted to anybody. And you, if you already feeling them type of feelings, we got all kinds of other discussions to have. So, you know, what is gay to you and why do you feel like you're gay? Okay, so let's speed it up. You can answer any way you want to and I'm going to love you, but let's have that conversation. So let's speed it up and she, she's 17, 18. And she's like, Dad, I like girls. Oh, I like both. She uh, she she's under the table, kissing not only the dude but a girl. Well, I, I'm still kicking that table over, <laughs> and you know, getting the water hose or something. I don't know. You, y'all need to separate. You don't do that in front of me mm-hmm. uh, at any age. But you know, again, it's I love you. I may not agree with everything. I probably. I probably would go through that phase of, is this my fault that I do something? Did mm-hmm. you not see something from me that you were supposed to see? Mm-hmm. Um, and, that, and, that, and I know that's probably insensitive, but I think people have to realize, especially when you make these decisions about coming out, you may have been dealing with it for years. Mm-hmm. But when you said it to me, I'm now dealing with it in the moment. So all the things that you went through, trying to reconcile that in your mind and figure out if it was or if it wasn't, and if you were comfortable with it and how you were going to tell people, like, in that moment, I need that same amount of time to come to terms with what I just heard. So my, my initial reaction might not be the best, um, the most positive. I'm always going to leave with, I love you no matter what. But I may need some time. I may need the same amount of time that you needed to figure out if this was real to you for me to figure out, like, how to handle it. I'm not going to know right away because you just, it's a, it's a bombshell. You just dropped it on me. And I, I don't think any dad... Or any parent, maybe these new parents, but uh, I don't know. I would, I would feel like I feel short somewhere in there. All right. I might just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whatever I didn't do, I apologize. Big brother, you want to go or you want me to go? You want, you want to go ahead and go? Oh, no, you can go. Well, I've, I've actually had it happen to me. And... My my answer was, I don't care. Are you happy? They was like, yeah. I 
was like, okay, well, I'm not responsible for your happiness. So as long as you're happy, I'm happy. So I don't care if you're gay or not. You know, that that's that's something that you're feeling. And I think when they asked me that, <clears throat> excuse me, it was them kind of looking for maybe a little bit of of a safe place and a little bit of a and, and a little bit of uh validation. That knowing that it's okay for them to be who they are, regardless of what the norm is. Cause even because even in today's society, being gay really isn't norm. Because of how today's society is set up. But let's be honest, this has been going on for thousands of years. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I mean, people being gay, this is not something new. It just didn't pop up in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 70s. It, it's been going on for years. It's just that it's, it's been pushed down because people didn't want to deal with it or they don't want to hear about it or they don't understand it. Uh, my my point of view on it is if you're happy, then be happy. It doesn't it doesn't matter how I feel about it. And it's not gonna change the way that, you know, I love you. So right. do can do I, do can I ask you what, what age that was that you got approached with that? Mm, how old they was they was in high school. So maybe the ninth or tenth grade. So whatever age, I don't, look, I don't remember how old. What 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 grade? What how old are you that in ninth or tenth grade? What are you fifteen? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Like 15, 15, 16. 15, 15, so 15, 15, 15, 16. So yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. I mean, I think at, at, by that age, I would feel like they they may have enough information about themselves or about what they. You know, you probably you coming into puberty or you you in the middle of puberty, so yeah, you know you might be actually experiencing something. But at seven, or you know younger than that, mm-hmm. I, how do you know? Yeah, because you have cause, you because that? you haven't experienced. I guess I guess because you haven't really experienced those type of feelings yet to know. Yeah. You know whether you are or not, Big Brother. What's your take on this? Um, I think we should, you know, because it's the the coming out is a very heavy subject, sensitive subject, and it's hard for the person who feels as though they have to do it. And it's not an probably not an overnight thing because the person had to arrive at the place where they feel brave enough or mm-hmm. safe enough to say it. And I know we initially started off where it said a lot of people seem like more and more people are coming out well times have changed where there are a few more safe spaces and it's not so much where like it was way back in the day but you know with that being said with everything that everyone says I just say I don't want to say let me see how I want to put this it's a person it's a human. Mm-hmm. We have to, I would think it's hard for them and it's hard for the parent to hear it. But just think about how hard it is for the person to arrive at that place. And if we could just not make it about us for that moment, yes, we're going to need time to take it in. But if we can just give that person their moment and let them have that and then find it within ourselves to hear and stand in love and remember this is your child this came from your body someone said before regardless of what you do you're still my child if your child is received in love your child will move in love if your child is rejected your your child will move through life feeling rejected looking to be accepted so like i said it's not it's hard to understand and you might not understand it at first but the thing is 
let that person have their moment and try to find it in yourself to hear, see, and receive it in love. And then you, if you have to go away and do some work so you can understand it, do that. But let, and your child at the same time has to give you the space to try to understand it. I just think that it's a heavy subject. It's heavy for the person going through it. It's heavy for the person, the parent, and everyone has to give that each other that space to get there regardless. And I do understand that it is hard to hear when you say you hear a child or whatever, you know, age say something like that. You do want more information. Where did you hear it from? Where are you going with this? And things like that. But not to take up too much time, I just think that we have got to start dealing with this in love. I heard it said, like, especially in black and brown communities, people rather hear that their kids are in jail or doing <laughs> drugs before they want to hear something like this, or they got a teenage baby on the way. Try to deal with love. Look at the human. We don't want to talk to our loved ones between a glass wall. Like, you know, that, that little pillar glass that they have in prison where you talk on the phone and they got that little glass wall. Mm hmm. Do you really want this to be that glass wall between you and your child and your child doesn't feel loved by you? So they go feel so they go find love wherever they can out in the world with whoever they can love your child. That is still your child. That's just the way I I see it. You might not understand it at the moment, but love your child. Like I said, it's a thin line between love and hate. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what part of that line you want to be on. So you're not mad that your teenage kids are having sex, but you're mad that this one teenage kid is coming out to you. It's like, stop separating everything. Love your child. That's just the way I feel. You're just going to see what they said and you're just going to stop seeing your child. Nah, I'm sorry. If I had a kid, I would pray to God that I would just be able to stand in love and hear it and just grab my child and say, look, I don't understand this, but I'm going to love you regardless. That's sorry, Jens. I didn't mean to take up that much time. Oh, no, you good. You just, good. I just, I just want to like frame the conversation again. We, we're talking about children. And so, yeah, yes, you do love your child. You love them in any shape, form or fashion that they, they present themselves in, but they are children. You know, when my daughter came to me to tell me she had a crush, I received that. As, that's not something you want to hear. You know, most dads are ready to hear at seven. She got a crush on some little boy, and now she's under the table with him. And it was, all right, you feel comfortable talking to me about this. That's cool. Let's talk about it. But do you understand what you're saying? What, do you, what does a crush mean to you? Yeah. You're talking about you love this boy. You're talking about you're in a relationship with this boy. You're seven. I need to help you understand that you may not have the information to be making these decisions right now, or you don't understand what you're saying when you say it. And I would never allow you to make some life changing decision at seven when I, it's my job because I love you to protect you from yourself sometimes. So at me, yeah, at 15, 16, maybe older than that, <clears throat> that's a different conversation. But when we're talking about our children, it, if we love them, you know, we, we help mold and guide them. And we have to provide them values. If we don't give them our values, they're going to get them from somewhere else. So it's, it's oh, our no, job I... to impart those values and those what we think is right and what we think is good, you know, in our children. And when they're making decisions that we know that they don't have the information to make, we sometimes need to protect them from their, themselves because we love them. So it's not rejecting you for who you are, but at a certain age, you don't know who you are. Like I'm 42, and I think I, I may have just in the last 10 years really figured it all out in terms of who I am and what I believe and how I want to present myself to the world and what I care about the world seeing from me. So at, at, at a certain age, I do have to, because I love you, like help you understand what it is you're doing and not just accept whatever you say because I know you don't know what you're saying. Hmm. I, th I think there, I think, some of these children, when they come up to you or they ask you, I think they're asking for guidance. Some. I think they're just, they don't know what they're hearing or they don't know how they're feeling. And maybe all they've got to do is talk it out and to help them figure out what's, what's really happening, right? So it could also be guidance, right? I mean, reaching, instead of being like, hey, this is what's going on, maybe they don't know how to 
say it, so they're trying to reach out for help. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've never felt that way. You know what I mean? So it, it's hard to tell, you know, what what they're reaching out for. You know what I mean? But if they're little kids, you know, it, it's, 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 it's tough. You know what I mean? I mean, once you get older and they're 17, 18 years old, there's really not much you can do but try to, you know, talk to them and they, they take the decision. You know, that's the decision they take. But, uh, gee, that's right. You know, when they're, when they're young, it's, you know, it, they pick everything up like a sponge, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everything that they see on TV, everything that they learn, you know, they pick it up and, and I don't know, I feel like they, you can change them on, on their personalities on who they really are. Right. Uh, depending on, on the amount of information they get. There's definitely a lot of strong influences now compared to when we was growing up. You know, and there's different angles that those influences can hit you from now. You know, then it was just, you know, when we was growing up, it was mostly on TV. You know what I mean? And then it would be the people you see at school or when you go to functions now, you got social media. You got, you know, music, all kind of TV shows, movies. So there's a lot of influences out there now. A lot of strong ones, too. But I think this was a, it, this was just something that popped up. It, you know, I was just thinking about, like, it just seems like it's just been a more of a abundance. And like I said, this is not something new, but this is like a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you just you just hear about it a lot more. I mean, you you've even hearing how a lot of adults are complaining about it's just so much. Uh, you know, it's so much in the movies. You know, in the in the music, it's like you you it's, it's so much influence out there. It's like you know, I don't want to hear this, but at the same time, is my child listening to this and how they how they taking this information? Like, could this like really change the way that they're thinking? Like, is it is it is it what they're thinking, or is it what they feeling? Which is kind of what I'm getting from Joe and J. Dot. It's like you know, is 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 this what you're thinking, or is this how you feel? Because if you're only seven or eight years old, how do you know what this feeling is if you if you don't even understand it? Yeah, I got a question for the group before we move on. What's up? When you were when you were growing up, going to school, how many <clears throat> peers or people that said that they were go out there and said they were gay? How many people did you can you count and or you can remember? As far as I can remember, growing up all the way through high school, all the way through all that tech school and all that, I never met one uh, because either they're scared. Mm-hmm. I never heard of anybody coming out of anything. I did, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say at least two. I'm gonna say at least two, and one of them, I think he was actually trying to uh, transition pretty early. Before transitioning was like a really big thing, so yeah. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say two. Yeah, I don't remember many people coming out because I just, I, I guess, in school, probably not until the later years of high school. Where I were any of my peers having conversations with each other about sex, but uh, there were definitely kids that we knew. Like when they, when I see them on Facebook now and they're gay, I'm not like, oh wow, shock. Like no, I we knew. Yeah, you know, yeah. The fact that you're telling everybody now is not a, a not a surprise. Like you know. Yeah. But, uh, but I don't. It wasn't the topic of conversation. I guess. <clears throat> um, not so much coming out but you know in high school people were now looking back not even think about were label gay which is mean you know but yeah label but not come not coming out that type of way but you know not not so many safe spaces you know it's it was extra extra taboo Mm -hmm. you know so yeah label but not but not coming out and you know everyone knows met has someone who is, you know, gay in their life. They you just don't know it because the person hasn't come out. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
good convo, y'all. Good convo. Well, y'all want to go ahead and spice it up a little bit? Just <laughs> this, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, but who, who, who all going to be there? And on this one, we're talking about dealing with family during the holidays and family events. Yay! <sighs> so <laughs> I hate the holidays. I, I fucking hate the holiday with a passion. I don't mind the holidays if I'm at home. <laughs> but I don't want to be around no stores. I don't. So you like y'all y'all know I got I got some family stuff going on right now. So I've already like pre-committed to going to like a Christmas brunch. And like I agree. I was like, yeah, we'll come. And it was like it was really like an emotional answer it wasn't like i i didn't really think about it like while i was getting involved i was like shit like i hung the phone i was like shit i just that's like three months from here so now i'm gonna be thinking about for like the next three months about this damn um christmas brunch did you ask yourself who's gonna be there (laughs) no because during the conversation that that's when i was receiving a whole bunch of family news and stuff so i like i said i didn't really have a chance to uh, uh, react to the whole thing, but so Dad, you you what? So what? What? What's your deal? You don't you you don't like the holidays, or you just don't like being around people during the holidays? Well, I don't. We've we've had this discussion, and I got in trouble for my whole uh, take on <laughs> hugging, but uh, I don't like people. This it sounds worse than it really is. I love people. I don't like. I don't like people in general. And so any event that involves a large group of, of people is going to always rub me the wrong way. And I was a I was a picky eater when I was a kid. So if you're talking about an event that involves food and people, mm. uh, you count me out. I don't want to be there. I'd mm. rather not. And you know how black families do. Well, <sighs> your eyes don't look good. You're so thin. You're so thin. Just leave me alone. I'm going to mm. eat what I feel like eating. And if I don't, I'm not, we're not doing this. We're not doing this today. So, yeah, I got PTSD Especially Thanksgiving, right? Fuck Thanksgiving for life. I don't ever. Don't invite me. See, like what? Well, like when me and Fee got married, <laughs> she'd be like, "Ain't you gonna invite your mom over for you know Thanksgiving or Christmas?" I was like, "We don't, we don't do that here." <laughs> it's like Wakanda. We don't, we don't, we don't do that here. <laughs> like we just wait. You don't invite your mom for Thanksgiving. We don't do that here. Like, okay. like, do woke people even celebrate Thanksgiving? I'm just curious. No, oh. no, Again. <laughs> none of it, none of it. <laughs> I'm waiting for Joe to jump in on at, that one. At least I don't. Like, like me, like, like on my, like my mom, like she's never. We never did like the big dinners like that. Like my sister might have tried it, and then we was like, "Do we ready to go?" Because you know how black people are. You know, we're gonna eat at one, and then. It's four twenty five and then the next game is starting. No. Um we we came to eat. Well, don't y'all wanna hang out? No. No, we don't. You know, so me and my mom, we're on the same page. I could come get my food and I just go back home and eat. That that's how me and my mom works. So if I cook if I cook the food, she'll come and get her food or I drop it off and she's happy. I'm the same way. I'm good. But if I like, if I go over somebody's house, you're going to get about a good 45 minutes. And then I'm done. Yeah. I just, this, cause this is the value of white friends. So I realized like black Thanksgiving and white Thanksgiving is two different things. Mm-hmm. I went to, uh, my homie Chad invited me to Thanksgiving, like maybe two years ago. And if he invites me again, I would go. Cause we decided we went to his uh, his family's house, his family's property. First of all, he kept calling it a property, which was fucking me up from the beginning. <laughs> he called the house a property, and we had to drive like an hour to get there. And we driving through really sparsely populated sections of Texas, and I was really starting to get worried. Like, you know, dude, like, did I did I offend you in some way? Are you driving me to an empty field somewhere so mm-hmm. you'll never find me? Like, what is where are we going? Uh, but we got there. We left at like eleven o'clock. Drove for an hour had Thanksgiving lunch. I was home before three. And I was I was oh, awesome. I loved it. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah, because that because most of that's just traveling. That's not even like right. you being there. This is like, so let me ask you this: since you went there, because I haven't had a chance to be habitual yet, so I'm gonna do it. This okay. is this is the point. Tell me about the food. Tell me about the season. The seasoning, like, what did you did? What, it's the food seasoning. That's that's what I want to know. Like okay. when you went to his his people's property. Now, was it a property or was it a plantation? Because I felt like you're trying to say plantation. Or was it? It was, it was, it was, it was a property. You know, okay. A lot of people buy land in Texas, and you put, like, two cows on it. So now it's agricultural. You get the tax breaks, all that. But, yeah, it was, it was a property. Okay. So you got two cows. On, was it a lot of trees? They had two lakes. Two, two lakes. Yeah. That's, that's probably an on, old plantation. On the that's a property. It's probably, it's probably an old plantation. So tell me about the food. <laughs> It was it was pros and cons. It's Texas, so they smoke everything. Okay. So you know the turkey was pretty good, but it was a lot of gluten free you know, <sighs> stuff. Like it was it was very. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything bad about it because I want to be invited back. Shout out to Chad and the whole. Uh, it's whole just family. us. He, the, 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 he he doesn't even listen to the show, so it's just us. to tell this how. Did, did they did they have pumpkin pie? Or did they have sweet potato pie? Man, I want to say it was pumpkin. It was pumpkin. I did you? Say, I want to say it was pumpkin. With like with the, apple pie. I know they had apple pie. I had the apple pie. Now, did they have like the little funky ass extra whipped cream foam shit on it and stuff, trying to make it look all cute? Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely like marshmallows and stuff in the sweet potatoes and things like that. It was, it was, you know, it was mm. a little extra, but uh, I enjoyed myself and I was out in less than an hour. So uh, that's the biggest takeaway for me. The food. I I don't go to Thanksgiving anything for the food. Okay, I, I hate turkey. Before we move on, did they know you was coming? They well, did. he said he's trying to get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> they did. I I, I miss y'all. The family. I miss y'all. I'm sorry. It, uh, it don't work out. I was at his wedding dinner, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked me if I could help carry the cake out when we were leaving. And then I realized I'm at the long. I'm at the end of a long line of white people, and I'm holding the box. Mm -hmm. It just didn't look good mm -hmm. at all. I look like the help, which happens often. Right. I'm dealing with them. Right. You know, cool. I, no, I was I was just asking if they knew you was coming because they might have had like that one dish that they know that dark skinned people like. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Like, yeah. did they have like a special type of macaroni and cheese? They had extra cheese in it. You know that it was, it was all it's all gluten free. If you are a white <laughs> friend of mine, you have to know that I'm. I'm gonna bring up race. I'm gonna bring it up first. I like my racism up front. Gotcha. So you know, my white, my white people to hang around me. No, don't don't do no extra stuff because I'm black. Because I'm a I'm gonna call you a racist. Okay. Okay. Uh, big brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> big brother. I forgot what the question was. Because <laughs> I'm listening. To that. Okay. Uh, who all gonna say it again? Yeah, who's all gonna be there dealing with the fa dealing with family during oh. holidays and family events? Uh, <clears throat> I don't, you know, I like the holidays and you know going over family house and things like that. My only problem is, which I work on a lot, is I'm one of those. So we're not going to talk about it. Like somebody done did something and like, yo, we all here. We're not going to talk about it. But you know, we all. When you got to put on airs and act like this person didn't do what they did. And yeah, sometimes that can be a little bit hard. So sometimes I do want to know who's going to be there so I can know what headspace I need to be in before I get there. Because mm. I'm being invited to someone's house. So I'm not going to be the one to, you know, stir the pot on anything, you know. So if it's someone that I feel as though owes people, me, an apology <laughs> or needs to make amends or something like that, you know, I just keep it very cordial. Okay, so tell me about the, so 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 tell us about the food. About the food, um, actually, my family can really cook. They cook really good, especially like you know the usual things, you know, sweet potatoes, the macaroni and cheese, you know. But I'm vegetarian, so I don't eat turkey. But you know, desserts, you know, galore. So you know, they they cook very very well. So yeah, we always eat well. I got two questions for you, big brother, because I know you're vegetarian. Let's just say hypothetically. A piece of turkey falls in your macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Are you going to eat it? 
are you going to like kind of like push it to the side and eat around it or what what you going to do oh absolutely not i'm not going to eat it like for me you can't use the same spoon that you used in a meat thing mm -hmm. to give me my food i have to see that this is a clean serving utensil and make sure it didn't touch anything okay so you bougie so my next question is <laughs> But so my dick's J Dot, you're not gonna help me out. Yeah, Joe, bougie, where are you at? That's not bougie. Don't right. don't put the green spoon in the macaroni and cheese or we're gonna fight. Thank that's you. a problem. Thank you. Fight. So my next question is actually before I get to Joe, because I know this is this is more for the uh Go ahead, the dark skinned brothers. <laughs> is 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 broccoli casserole cool? In the, you know, what? broccoli casserole. Broccoli, broccoli yeah, don't. casserole. No? I don't want no broccoli casserole, no green bean ca casseroles. No, in there. Oh, who's eating that? Hmm. You're not getting invited back. You bring a casserole. <laughs> really? There really? You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Hola. Hola. So, oh. hey, I, I want to make sure you get your mic. Joe. HR is, is ready. How are you? Well. Sir. Yes, sir. HR is looking at us. I, I said. Hey, Joe. Joe. So what, what, how, how, what are you doing during the, the family, during, during the holidays, during the, uh, do you do the family events? How's the food? What's going on? Mm, well, we do the whole family thing, mm -hmm. but it's, it's going to sound weird. But uh, there's times where I'm kind of tired of the, we all go to the same <laughs> house on this day. We all go to the same, you know. So I like to, now that I have my own family, mm -hmm. I just, I sometimes don't go to them, you know, they have Thanksgiving, they have Christmas, whatever. And I'll just do my own Christmas here or I'll take the family out on vacation and celebrate Christmas somewhere else. Or, you know what I mean? It's, we just grew up like that. Everybody, you know, we're always together, always together. Same, the same thing, right? The same type of culture all the way growing up. And uh, I want to be, I want to do something different. You know what I mean? I want to take my family to Disneyland on Christmas. You know what I mean? I want to uh, rent a cabin and smoke a ham in a in a different part of the state. You know, if you want to come, you want to come, right? But I want to do things differently. Um, it's gets tiring after twenty some years <laughs> of the same shit, right? Right, right. So. Yeah, sometimes I go to them, we pick and choose which ones we're going to go to, you know, and uh, my wife is working, she works at the hospital, so, you know, when you work in the hospital, the, the shifts are weird, sometimes you work Christmas, sometimes you don't, next year you work Thanksgiving, you know, it just depends which which shift and what unit she's in, right? Um, but uh, usually if she works during the holidays, if my wife is not with me, I'm not going nowhere. So this is it's time for, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and holidays and all that. It's like, I'm not going to show up just me and the kids. It's we show up together as a unit or we don't go nowhere. And I cook for my wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're all one unit. So if my wife's like, hey, I'm working Thanksgiving, then I make Thanksgiving here. Mm -hmm. And I do whatever I can, right? I'm not a chef, so I'm, I'm not the greatest. But I make whatever I can. By the time she gets home, it's 9 o'clock at night. Mm. So, um. So, yeah, usually it, it's like that. And, you know, some family members get mad. You know, why well, you, sh you show up at least in the morning? And it's, no, I'm not going to show up unless my wife goes with me. We're all going together. Um, the food, the food is, is extra. We Mexican people like to eat Thanksgiving and we add Mexican shit to it. You know, it's just, just the way it works. Mm -hmm. You have the turkey and then you have Mexican food. <laughs> you know, my dad's over there grilling steaks and shit. I mean, it's, I mean, uh, making brisket. I mean, it's, it's, it never fails, right? You show up and you show up to Thanksgiving and you have the turkey and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese and all that stuff, right? Just like regular. And then you look on the other side and you got carne asada tacos. Burritos and, and enchiladas on the same table. Yeah. yeah, I got you. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, because my dad's side. like, yeah, you know, I'd rather eat the meat and the turkey, you know, I'd rather eat the kind of sour stuff and the brisket, you know. My dad, brisket for everything. I don't know what, what the deal is, but <laughs> you got Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, and whatever celebration is, is the brisket. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm like, all right, that works. So we all eat the brisket and you have tamales and all that. You know, it's all, it's weird, man. But the food is always really good. Um, You know, we have all kinds of different things. Not a whole lot of pies. Mm. Which is weird. It's weird, huh? It's weird. Yeah. If it's a pie, somebody bought it. Joe sound mad about that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and that was Joe anger was. behind that. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Joe. What about the seasoning? Do y'all have do y'all have issues with the whole seasoning thing? And look, and this is kind of for everybody. I don't know if y'all know, but I'm like on this whole habitual line stepping thing right now, and we here, and I'm comfortable as hell right now. Uh, what is y'all thing like? If your spouses or your girlfriend, whatever, and they go you over their house and it's like the food just ain't hitting, do you eat or do you just like get a plate and kind of just like, I'm going to save it for later type thing? Because I've, I've, I've actually been like, no, I'm, I can't, I can't. Feels like you're going to eat like, nah, I'm good. Well, we ate like 12 hours ago. Yeah, I'm fasting. But I'm 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 good. I'm gonna have to use that one. I'm gonna have to use that one. <laughs> yeah, there you see. You yeah, I'm fasting to say I got my water. Uh, you know, this is God's work. You can't go against God. Uh, but that yeah, that's I'm the I'm the king uh, of I just ate or figuring out that way to to sneak off and put the plate in the trash mm, down. Mm. So they can't see all the food that was still on there. I got I try to be nice about it. I've never just been like flat out like you really like, nah, I'm just, I'm not. Yeah. I'd rather not. Yeah, see, <laughs> it, it depends what, what house you're at. So if I go to my mother-in-law's house, it's never a no. Mm. I have to eat that shit. You have to eat. No matter it. what. Can she, eat. Can she cook? Now, I don't, I don't want to put your life in danger because I know the family's home. And I'm in a safe place, but I just want to know, uh, can she cook, though? She can, but she's a traditional cook. What, uh, is it? what does that mean? Old school cooking. So she cooks with lard. <gasps> old school lard, the pig thing, everything throws in. Every, she's old school cook. Mm. And sometimes... See, we're not used to that anymore. So I, I will get, I will get uh, stomach pains and all that. But the food is you get the shits, you get the BGs, and you yeah, get the you shits. Yeah, yeah, it, it cling, clings you the hell out. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, I'm, I said for you, Joe. I got you. I got you, brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's bubble good. The food is excellent. It's just. <laughs> Like, damn. That's the aftermath. Yeah. Like you pass out, you're passing out, watching TV and shit. It's like six o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, damn. Like, you know, but I can never, I can never say no. Uh, it's a, it's disrespectful if I was to tell my mother in law that I don't want to eat her food. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Quick question. Then we're going to move on. Which one would y'all prefer? If, if you, if you had, if you was told you had to go to a holiday, uh, brunch or dinner? Are you doing Thanksgiving? Or are you doing Christmas? You gotta think about this because you do Christmas, you may have to bring like a little gift or something, or you no know, do something that you don't want to do money wise. I'm not afraid to bring a gift with. You're not. <laughs> no, if someone if they invited me, but I probably would want to do Thanksgiving only so I can. Enjoy Christmas, but see, you single and you ain't got you ain't like yeah. I bring a gift. I which when we bring a pie, and then you pick up a gift card while you getting the pie. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's easy for you, but for us, for us, they don't spend three four hundred dollars on gifts. Then we gotta turn back around and buy another gift. You know what I'm gonna do? See what you see. This is what you do. You get you like one of them nasty ass fruit cakes. 
Then you ain't got to worry about no. You ain't got to worry about nobody sure invite can. you back over for for Christmas no more. <laughs> so so gentlemen, let's. I think it's safe for us to to, to say Will's not getting us nothing for Christmas. <laughs> a fruit cake. He gonna send you an e card. Uh, yeah, there you go. You know, Joe's polite, so he'll pick up a gift for us. You know, Jay Dot will be like, oh, I got to get these gentlemen some gifts. Nah, they all getting I'm, gift cards. I'm going half with Willie on the e-card. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> be signed by both of them. No, Jay Dot going to make some cookies and put them, like, in a bag. <laughs> like, Joe, we got cookies. <laughs> Man, I was, at work last, I was at work last Christmas, and I swear somebody... They was putting out little baggies of treats that somebody made from home, and they looked like Fritos dipped in chocolate. I think somebody <laughs> bought a bag of Fritos <sighs> and dipped them in chocolate and then put them in little Ziploc bags for us. I, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Mm. I didn't know that was a thing. That's funny. Wow. All right, so moving on. I was worried for a minute. You I was worried? What happened to Willie? I thought that gummy bear got me. <laughs> he was tilted. <laughs> Wait, J Dot. It flashed at him. He like this. Nah, no. Nope. J Dot, take over. <laughs> nah, no gummies. Ain't no, ain't no gummies, y'all. I'm just, I'm really, I'm just, I'm trying to catch up on my sleep. So, as a society, the the episode. What's that? <laughs> so you trying to catch up on your sleep in the middle of the episode? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm multi. <laughs> Wait, you like multitasking? Let me your grandma, <laughs> don't rest of my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> As a society, are we prepared for the worst case scenario? Go, Joe. <laughs> I mean, we talking Joe, about Joe been waiting for this. <laughs> we talking about fin- financial downfall, food shortage, and down power grids. We are not ready for nothing, man. Like, honestly, look what COVID did to us. You know what I mean? People were already freaking out, lost every. I mean, it was wild. So just imagine if there's some kind of crisis, financial crisis. Um, I don't think we are, man. I think everything's so expensive that you can't even save up to be financially okay. You know what I mean? You, any little thing can break you. You know what I mean? Uh, with, when it comes to money and stuff like that. I mean, the housing is is incredible, right? You out here, you get a. I mean, it's it's a lot, it's a lot less money out here, the cost of living in Arizona. But if we were to lose our home, we would be screwed. We would have to live in our camper trailer because there's no way in hell we would be able to survive for the amount of of money these these rentals are, or these homes are the interest. We would we already have a plan. Mm-hmm. We had a plan for this. So if there's a financial crisis, something goes down. We have shit hits the fan. I lose my job. Something happens. We lose our house. We're moving to Texas. And, you know. They're going to be the first ones to put the fence up. (laughs) Yeah. Hell yeah. We're moving. (laughs) We're moving, man. We're going back. It's, I don't know. It's just, I don't think we're prepared, man. I'll be, be, the people who have money are prepared. You know, but us, I mean, you got to have some kind of. I mean, we're gonna struggle, right? If something like this was to happen. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm gonna do this for you, Willie. I'm gonna step across the line today, so you don't have to. Okay. But, uh, Joe, I need to. If your plan is to move to Texas, to, to help you out, I need to hear your white voice real quick. I need, to, I need to make sure that when you try to get across that border, you mm. don't run into any problems. So, mm. let's put put on your best white voice for us real quick. So, just we know that you're you're gonna be safe in that, Ooh, in that you, scenario. Use your Ray Romano voice. Ray. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's bilingual. Hey. It's, it's it's very bilingual. A great show, by the way. I think I was from. I uh, I didn't know he was Hispanic. Is he? No, Joe. He's not like Italian. <laughs> Is yeah. it? Is it Italian? Like, yeah. I kinda, it's the same, almost. Yeah. Yeah, if, you could pull off, if you could pull off a Ray Romano, you might be. Right. If, if your plan is to come to Texas, I just want you to understand it's Texas. You might need to, you know, be able to pass to get across. I'm going to already be here, so I'm yeah. That is true. I'm good. Well, we would just have to move to, we'll just move, you know, to El Paso, which is basically Mexico. Cause that's where we, that's that's where we moved from, you know what I mean? We moved from Texas to Arizona, and then 
I don't know. <laughs> That's why I will go back there. It's just my family's there. Yeah, I have we have no one here, just mom, dad, and you know, like extended family. But over there, everybody's over there. So mm-hmm. that's it's probably starting so. to make sense because I just learned this week that El Paso is the only city in Texas that's on Mountain Time. The whole state of Texas on Central Time, El Paso just decided, nah, we're not, we're not yeah. doing that. And where, and where is El Paso located? So next to the border. Um, okay. Next to what is Mexico? So. And it's on mountain. And it's on Mountain Time. Mountain time. Wow. Yeah. You been there before, um, Big Brother? I'm a military brat. Yeah, we lived on Fort Bliss. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what what do you think, Big Brother? You you think we are prepared for the worst case scenario? Sadly to say no, because you know we pay attention to other things. L- far too much, you know, entertainment wise, you know, cause I got to admit when, what was that bank that just failed? I was like, you know, you never really think banks just collapse. You're like, how does bank oh, fall? Silicon city. Yes, there. Joe. Like this, I'm like watching the news story intense. I'm like a bank collapsed. Mm. So between seeing that, you know, Texas, I don't know what kind of power grid y'all got. I always see the news. Y'all stuff fail all the time. I'm like, how do y'all? And then when they try to play y'all and say, yeah, you still got to pay your bill. I was like, dang, Texas, during the wintertime, during the summer, your power grid's falling and food shortage supply. We seen that during COVID. Those people, yo, going to the store during COVID was like, you want a reality check about how fragile life is? And bare shelves. So sadly to say, no, nah, unless you really got a plan, it's going to be the haves and the have nots. I don't know if anyone's seen that movie. It was on HBO. Well, when it was called HBO Max, it's called DMZ. Oh, yeah. David DuVernay did it. Yeah. So about when America just broke apart and it was, it, I think if something happened, it, we would be kind of like that little colonies from state to state. God forbid. J. Dot, what you think? I mean, I know personally, I'm not prepared for anything. Like, I I depend on Google to turn my lights off, stuff like that. So, I mm. if, if all everything, if the infrastructure fails, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I I just I'm not one of those people. Like, I I feel like. And shit hits the fan, it's going to hit the fan. And and unless you, I, I salute people who get like super dedicated. Like I watched that show about the like the homesteaders, the people who really go off the grid, mm-hmm. and, like put in the work to like building their own stuff so that they be completely uh, not dependent on the rest of the world. But that's a lot of work. Um, but yeah, I just we've been living in the last days for centuries at this point. Jesus was an apocalyptic figure. People thought that Jesus, when in his time, was a sign that the world was about to end. So we've been on the verge of the world ending for centuries at this point. I just, I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to worry about those things. If it happens, I'll have to adjust. But I have no plan, to be honest with you. And uh, I'm very dependent on creature comforts and all the stuff that being a U.S. citizen, you know, provides. So I don't know what I would do if uh, if this stuff failed. But I'm black. I'll figure it out. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what, that's what I'm banking on. My blackness is gonna carry me through. Right. I believe it. Yeah. I know during my um my vacation, I started the, the Walking Dead series over. I don't know why it's like one of my go to to watch when I'm on vacation, dead and some other stuff. I hope you didn't watch it at night. Yeah. I watch it at night. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm thinking about you between those gummies and don't see that. I know your dreams have to be all over the place. He just messed up all day long. Nah, <laughs> nah. If anything, shooting they... people in the head in his dreams for weeks now. He's just act funny. Yeah. Have a seizure in front of me as he wants to shoot you in the head. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> 
oh no i'm just laughing because i'm picturing all four of us in that scenario like yo one of us running somebody trip who going back for him i feel like joe got the gun so i'm hanging out with joe i got some yeah see i knew <laughs> but can you can you shoot because you can't fish so i'm wondering if you can shoot it. somebody else is gonna have to fish for us i'll shoot the fish <laughs> We, we, <laughs> well, we all gonna die. Fish. We all gonna big brother, die. Big brother, you do the fishing. <laughs> really, a cook them. Joe is a security. Uh, yeah, I'll figure out some way to be of use. Oh shit! I haven't figured it out yet. We all we it. all gonna die because one. Me and Joe are gonna do something that's gonna that's gonna be the event of Big Brother's death because we do something stupid. Because <laughs> he can't come and save us. <laughs> it never fails. <laughs> it never fails. Oh, oh. I forgot what we was talking about. <laughs> this was. Are you? Are we going to be ready in the podcast? No, no, no. We're going to die after, after this conversation. No, we we not ready. <laughs> Evidently, we're not. We just not ready. Yeah. Oh wow. So let's go ahead and wrap this up because yeah, I, I don't lost track of. We 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 all gonna die. So, all right, <laughs> we gonna that big brother. Yeah. Hey. So what? No man. Um. I don't know what you gonna do. If you run out of gummy bears, Joe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Joe. What is something that you should not give to someone for Christmas? Um. Oh man. <clears throat> Something you shouldn't give anybody for Christmas. Um, when we come back, yeah, come back to them. Come, come back to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Big Brother. What is something that you should not give to someone for Christmas? And you cannot use fruit uh, cake. Say that again. You can't use fruit cake. It's already been taken. <laughs> um. So t- to the listeners, no one wants socks. I don't care how old the person is. No one wants socks for Christmas. It just says that you did not feel like buying a gift. You gave no thought to the gift. Socks are a stocking stuffer. So think of a better gift. No one wants socks of any kind. So do not give people socks as a present. It's a stuffing stock. I would probably, if, if, if they're like good thermal socks, as someone as someone who works outside, I can use a good pair of Well, I'm, I'm talking about this is a gift. I'm it's sorry. not like an additional gift. It's your gift. Do you want that sock? Do you want socks as your gift? Your your main gift? The big, showstopper? Big brother, if you took the time to pick me out a good pair of thermal socks, I would take those thermal socks. Joe, he's lying. He'd be on a separate group chat talking about me to j You believe <laughs> he got me socks for Christmas? <laughs> How much time can it possibly take to pick out socks? <laughs> it can't be a difficult decision to make. It's socks. Or these thermal socks, boom, there we go. I did it. Nobody wants it as a gift. Yeah. Y'all be talking about me in a separate chat that I gave somebody socks. Yeah. Watch me try to get away with that way. Watch me try to give somebody socks and be like, I spent a lot of time on it. Nobody wants it. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Exactly. Nobody wants no socks. Go ahead. Go ahead, I'm ready, Jay. I'm ready. Uh, are you ready now? I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. All right. This is the thing I hate the most because I had to think about what I hate, you know, when I get to Christmas or what I hate the most is a damn gift card. Stop it. Give me something that you, if, if you don't know me, if we're going to a company party, I get it. But if you're my brother-in-law and you get me a $25 gift card, that's an insult. You should know me better by now than to at least buy me a book. You know what I mean? Or buy me something that resonates with who I am, right? Something that's like, hey, you're going to like this, right? And I know people are going to say, well, you know, it's a gift. They get, they can get you whatever you want. Well, you're not really thinking about, you're just doing it. When you're giving me a gift card, I feel like you just have to do it. So we're just going to get you a gift card because we, we couldn't think of anything else. I hate gift card exchanges. When I see that in my family, when there's stupid ass gift cards on there, I'm like, really? You guys couldn't have bought a teddy bear or something? You know what I mean? Or something, you got to give them a $25 gift card, $15 Starbucks gift card. No, I don't like that. 
I'd rather take the socks than the damn gift card. <laughs> I would I would take both. And then the funny thing is, I would probably take the gift card to, and go buy me a good pair of socks. Go ahead, J Dot. <laughs> I got a couple of things. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep it brief though. Uh one, stop waste, wasting money on cards. Stop. Just just don't buy Christmas cards mm-hmm. for nobody. Mm-hmm. They're not your words. So I'm not reading the card like, oh my God, look how much they love me or care about me. You didn't write that shit. So I don't do that. If you put something in it, then that's all I wanted. So you could have just barely, you could have just sent me an envelope with money in it. I don't need an explanation for it. Merry Christmas to me. I'm happy. I don't need the card. Don't wrap the gift card in a card. Nothing. Just stop wasting money on cards. And then second, I think people should stop giving people liquor for Christmas. And this is not the sobriety in me talking. It's just, what statement are you making? I love you so much that I'm going to buy you a bottle of a toxic chemical that I know is going to slowly kill you if you continue to drink it. But this is how I'm going to express how much I care about you. It's, it's not sending the message that you think it is. And you're probably not buying an expensive enough bottle. Unless you're buying some Louis XIII or something that a person couldn't afford on their own, mm. it's not a gift. It's, it's just not a gift. And if you know the person got kids, stop sending noisy shit to the house. That's, you're saying you hate me. You send me a gift that makes noise. You were saying you hate me. And that's what I heard when I opened it. So I just want you to know. Those were all very woke responses. And I appreciate you for saying that. Because I was going to say, I was going to say the card. So since you said the card, I'm going to say body fragrances you know people buy like the cologne the little uh um kits and all that stuff what are you trying to say you trying to say i'm stink you know what i mean <laughs> how you how you know this ain't this don't match my body you know what i'm saying i i i buy you no know, a, a certain type of you know I, I like berries and 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 flowers and you buy me all this other shit Stop. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like when people buy, you know, like, you remember those old Avon kits they were people would, would get you with the soap and then the, the, the um, had the soap on the rope. You had that. Then it was like the little, the little uh, deodorant, but all of it like smelled different. Like each piece smelled different. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Don't do that. That gift box you get from like the, the, um, the drugstore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. See, that that I feel like that is more of the thoughtless type gift because you just go into Walgreens. Oh look, they got this gift thing. It's fifteen ninety nine. You pick it up, write their name on it. I got you a gift. Wasn't no thought behind that at all. I'm just saying, Willie, like you you completely fucked up my whole plan because I definitely saw you as a. Uh, that Ziploc bag full of body oils from the dude at the barbershop. Like, that's, I just knew that, that was going to be a hit if I sent it to you. Body spray. <laughs> oh, no, no. Now, are we, talking about some, are we talking about some shea butter? Yeah, I don't ask him what's in it. It's just a Ziploc bag full of... The Ziploc uh, bag. <laughs> what it smell like? What it smell like, Jay? Yeah, the Ziploc bag. It's Egyptian musk. I just figured Egyptian musk was definitely your bag. I just, I knew mm. it was. Mm. I've been wrong before. Don't you know all those kitchen oil smells like Egyptian <laughs> musk? <laughs> all right. Well, Kings, why don't you let them know where they can find you? Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I'm Joe, the host of Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. You can find me on uh, Spotify and anywhere you listen to your podcast, uh, YouTube. Uh, I talk about society and culture and all kinds of different things to trigger people once in a while, but uh, it's all about thinking outside the box. Okay. J-Dot. Yeah, the What Is TWS podcast. Uh, episodes drop every Monday, anywhere you find a uh, dope podcast. And then also, you know, check me out on Opulence Radio. Uh, the Kiss the Sky Hour is Fridays at 8 p.m. Yeah, I get to, you know, play the music that I think is dope and take you on a quick journey. It's, it's a fun two hours. You want to check it out. Big Brother. I'm the resident Big Brother, host of Big Brother Advice Podcast, self-help, motivation, encouragement podcast. You can find me on all major platforms. New episodes premiere every Thursday. 
And I am Willie, half of the Thing About Us podcast that I co-host with my beautiful queen, Fiona. I'm always getting in trouble, but we talk everything relationships. That's all I got. Look, look, I'm going to keep doing this with y'all, okay? Follow the show. Subscribe. J-Dot's been trying to send. He been, him and Chef Elise been trying to go to Disneyland for three years. Facts. Three years. Buy Facts. a damn hoodie. Support black people. Joe wants some new shoes. Stop playing with us. I need to put some socks in the store. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We started, we're sick of this shit. Hey, you know what? Uh, hope y'all have a good holiday. God bless y'all. We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods. For extra content, find us on YouTube at The League of Kings Podcast and on TikTok at The League of Kings Podcast. Until next time, keep exploring society and culture with us.